You're listening to Something Cheeky, a collection of podcasts where two sisters discuss TV, books, and movies with just enough irreverence and far too many pop culture references. Welcome to Something Cheeky. I'm Nikki. I'm Rosanna. In this episode, we're discussing the novel The Lies of Loch Lamora. It is book one of the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. Uh, I have read this entire series that's out so far, and Rosanna has not read any of it at all. We're going to cover one chapter per podcast. In this episode, we're covering the prologue, where we get Locke's origin story, and we find out that the priest is a liar. I chose this book mainly because I love this whole series. I read this series a long time ago, and I love kinds of fantasy books like this. And it was just so much fun to get all the characters that we had. Uh, So I really wanted Rosanna to be able to read these too. Rosanna, why did you even agree to read this? Well, Nikki, mostly uh, because I was looking for a new series to read. Hmm. Um, I like reading books that have more books that come after them. (laughs) Also, you recommended it, and we have really similar tastes. And even though you didn't give me a lot of description, the little tidbits that you gave me definitely made me want to check it out. I'm really glad I didn't give you description so we can cover this without you knowing anything that's going to happen. And I don't even really remember what you told me to get me to read it anyway. That's great. Your bad memory. Your bad (laughs) memory is really helpful for this. Yes, it is. (laughs) So, Rosanna, what was your initial reaction once you finished the prologue? Well, the prologue is pretty long. It's um, not like usual prologues. It's about as long as a chapter. The first thing I noticed about it was the title, The Boy Who Stole Too Much. Yeah. Which I thought was weird and interesting. (laughs) Um, Another thing I noticed about it is that a lot of the names are unfamiliar. They're not regular names. The names Mm -hmm. of the places are not regular places it's um it's kind of obvious that this is not a reality that we live in Mm -hmm. um also the fact that there are orphans that live under a graveyard (laughs) which is kind of sad and that every time they talk about lights it's weird oh yeah they've got a a weird light situation happening Mm -hmm. so that's what i got in that (laughs) good okay that works yeah Do you have a favorite (laughs) quote from this prologue? Uh, My favorite quote was by Father Chains when he was talking to Locke. He says, I want you, I want to know why you killed them. And I want to know how you killed them. And I want to hear it from your own lips. And that was my favorite quote, because that was literally what I was thinking as I was reading (laughs) the end of that chapter. Tell me why this is happening. Who did you kill and why? (laughs) And how'd you get away with it? So I felt like in line with Father Chains at that point. Okay, that's fair. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the very beginning of the prologue, uh, we meet the thief maker, and we meet Locke, and we meet Father Chains. The thief maker is trying to sell Locke to Father Chains, pretending that it's some great deal he's getting. Uh, There was one part where he said, he's got larceny in his heart, which sounded (laughs) like such a line about someone. It was great. Especially for somebody who's like seven yeah he i just have to remember he's this little tiny kid yeah walking around with this horrible horrible man yeah from everything we hear about him he sounds terrible so yeah so the thief maker is either gonna sell lock or kill him mm-hmm. which is creepy again like i said kill a seven-year-old not our reality <laughs> <laughs> well you hope not god Ugh. yeah yeah so then uh we jump right into the flashback to the graveyard to find out Locke's real origin when when we really learn about him. Um, I really enjoyed this part because we find out about how all the orphans were purchased. Uh, you get the thief maker being just really fatherly at first. He seems, you know, so, so warm towards everyone. You're almost home. You're almost fed. Uh, what did you think the orphans were thinking at this point? Is the thief maker convincing? Are they desperate? I think they're hungry and this huh. person has promised them food and they don't know what's in exchange for, but they're too hungry to care at this point. I think that, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we find out that the Catch Fire orphans are from a place called Catch Fire, which is a really low rent part of Camor, which is kind of the, the whole area the place is called. 
Um, there was the Black Whisper Plague, which I thought is a great name for a plague. Mm-hmm. It just sounded very disturbing. Um, ominous. Yeah. This whole section made me feel very uncomfortable, mainly because yeah. all the children were dying yeah. in the in the story. It had, what, by the fifth day, there were no more screams. Mm-hmm. I mean, ah, that's just... Oh, it's, it's horrible. It is horrible. It's so sad. Yeah. And by the 11th day, there were, what, one eighth of 400 kids left. So you've got 50 kids in gangs running around. And mm-hmm. I just, all it made me think was like all the babies that must have lived there that had died because their parents died. died and couldn't take care of them. And yep. it was kind of a depressing way to start the whole book, which was unfortunate. Yeah. It yeah. definitely is a real low point to start it. Yeah. And then the thief maker jumps in and buys the, I guess, the best 30 kids. I'm not really sure how you evaluate the best kids <laughs> yeah, for best, thieving. Yeah, best why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they look sneaky. <laughs> let's let's buy these. <laughs> yeah, and he paid off the guards. He paid off somebody else. Uh, one thing I like about this part is that you find out that basically the city is super corrupt. Definitely. Everyone's getting paid off. It's just there's some... Uh, Kappa someone, Kappa Barsavi, mm-hmm. that is is back there somewhere. And things are happening behind the scenes that are really not good. We mm-hmm. also find out that Locke is uh, five or six, which is so young, so tiny for well, some little kid. And also that they talk about that he's five. And when the thief maker talks to him, he said, you were an orphan before the plague, yes. And you were stealing before that, too. So, yeah. How do you learn how to do that when you're so young? I mean, barely past toddlerhood. Yeah. And how long has he been all by himself just right. trying to get by? Because his parents obviously died way before this. We don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's upsetting that the whole thing starts out so sadly. It, it takes a while to really... Uh, well, does it really ever get to a happy place in this? No, it gets, not in the it prologue. Gets, <laughs> it gets at more all. interesting. It, it gets more fun later, I do promise. It's I not all so. uh, tears and sad babies. Okay. But it'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of also sounds like the origin story of a serial killer, maybe. So. Oh, God, you're right. I'm worried about it going that way. <laughs> it could be. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other if Locke becomes well, James or some I, Manson okay. brother. I'm going to be irritated at you if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized when I was saying that I can't even think of the name of any serial killer. I just tried to say James Manson, which is not his name. No. Who, I think it's Charles. Tra- thank you. Oh my god, I couldn't even think of it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a serial killer. Who, but All I can think of is Dexter. I have no idea. Jack the Ripper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that kind of feels like the old, I mean, that's Victorian times. This seems earlier than that when it, and it's a relation to Earth, I guess. But that works. Right. Yeah, okay. that's true. So we could have a tiny 60-year-old Jack the Ripper. Which, oh, can you imagine? Yeah, especially since he targeted prostitutes, didn't he? Ugh. Yes, he did. Here's the thing, though. I, yeah. I want to like Locke. Okay. Um, there's something about him that makes me want to like him. And maybe it's just because he's such a little baby. <laughs> but I want him to turn out okay anyway. And I'm rooting for him. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So uh, we jump back to the present with Father Chains, who is surprised that the thief maker even got permission to kill Locke, since it sounds like it's something that's difficult to do. So must have been pretty bad, whatever. Yeah whatever reason he gave um so they talk about the big man mm-hmm. and i kind of wanted to know from you why do you think he needs to give permission for all these kills like who, who is he i think that he's some kind of like mob boss figure mm-hmm. and everything has to go through him or to him um i'm not sure what could possibly give him the authority to say it's okay to kill somebody or it's not okay to kill somebody Mm -hmm. especially somebody who's seven (laughs) like what kind of person says yes that seven-year-old deserves to die so i think he's the head of a lot of stuff and also a terrible person (laughs) okay 
Well, we I know mean, he has not, to be. Yeah. We know he's not in charge of the city officially because we know about Duke of the Duke Nicavanti. Yeah. Correct. And so... But, I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Do they know about each other? Do they not? Are they... I don't know. I have a lot of questions. That, of course, of I know questions. the answer to you, too. When you don't I was going to say... But, you don't have any questions. I have questions. <laughs> you have answers I'm not allowed to have. <laughs> oh, yes. So many answers. Yeah. All right. So let's see what happens next. Oh, we get... Uh, I love the little throwaway mention when they're talking about the graveyard of the different worshippers that had to sleep in the tombs as part of their apprenticeship to some god. Yes. That's horrible. Why would... That, why is that part of it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Is there a god of death? Is this, I guess that's very Game of Thronesy, the god with no face, but. Yeah. Yeah. This whole, the whole prologue is just more and more information about how messed up this place is. <laughs> you have orphans, you have a mob boss, you have people that have to sleep in tombs. Yeah. It's, I, it's all really messed up. I don't, I don't know what sleeping in a, like, even if you are apprenticing to, I guess, study, I'm not really sure, or be a priest of the god of the afterlife, if it's their Hades version or something. Mm-hmm. Like, what does sleeping in a tomb get you? Does that help you understand what it's like to be dead? I don't. I don't think it does. I'm not sure I know. Yeah. <laughs> if weird. their argument, if, if that is their argument, it's not a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> so you would you would not be an apprentice to this religion? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> I want to be right. an apprentice to the god of, like, bakeries. There probably is one. So, like, bread, cupcakes, croissants. <laughs> I'm in for that. <laughs> I'd love to know that god's name because I would go to church every week for that. Probably has something to do with being fat. <laughs> <laughs> the god of gluttony, something. <laughs> <laughs> So we learn about how the thief maker became the thief maker. He's got nine broken fingers, which is very indicative of something he's done, seems like. I'm going to go with thieving. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he goes to stay in Shades Hill, the, um, the graveyard. There are a bunch of homeless kids already there. 20 years later, enter Locke, the bane of his existence at that point. <laughs> I like that. Um, his so unwanted. They, yeah, he, yeah, he's the thirty-first free kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by thirty, you get the thirty-first free. <laughs> uh, so, oh, at this point, they mention alchemical globes, mm-hmm. and I really like that. I, I, it's probably nothing like what the author imagined, but I imagine these weird, like you know the glass bowls like the blown glass that they yes. use i imagine a bowl like that with a little handle with some kind of weird fire in it i know that sounds ridiculous but i really like that idea like this kind of secret no, fire inside this glass that's kind of what i pictured too okay so not i so definitely crazy. pictured something like the fire from game of thrones oh Their the special the fancy green. fire yeah what is that fire that's called? kind of what i had in mind uh, I can't remember I what the fire is called. Um, and then the, he drinks it to become a dragon. Fire? Yeah. I think that that's really it. sounds like the right name. I think you're right on there. I think George R.R. Yes. R. Martin likes the words super and blow up. <laughs> so it's probably... I feel like I've heard him say those constantly. <laughs> they show up in every book. <laughs> this is a dance of super blow up dragons. Woohoo! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay, so... Uh, I love the description of the long main room that they're in because it sounds like he basically has a throne in there. Yep. So he really just it seems like he feels like he's the king of everything, his whole domain. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, so he tells all the kids that they're bought and paid for. Uh, if he hadn't have purchased them, they would have become prostitutes or rowers, which is also an upsetting thing to hear as a child, I would think. <laughs> if they even know what a prostitute right. is, I assume they know what a rower is. But yeah, right, that's... Exactly. Yeah, I don't like that. 
But no, it's I, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he says they can leave if they want, but he offers protection and offenders will be killed and uses the word savvy in that. So all I can think of is Captain Jack Sparrow. When he oh my said gosh, it. me too. It was just, which is such a creepy amalgamation of, I mean, he kind of looks like him in my head, like the really, really dirty looking uh-huh. guy. He just looks disgusting without the attractiveness part. <laughs> right. Yeah. To me, um, he looks like the other guy in Pirates of the Caribbean, the older pirate. Oh, the father? Who plays him. James something. Which, the person's dad? No, or... like, he's one of the other pirates that he hates Jack Sparrow, and they're... I can't oh, remember which movie yeah. it is. There's a, and it's the guy that plays him is James, I think, something. James. I don't know. Anyway, he's that. older and not as yeah. attractive. Okay. <laughs> so so that's who I pictured. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still dirty. Always, yes. Oh, just definitely. just seems very dirty. Just like the gross, stringy hair and ugh. Yeah. Plus they talk about how Locke stank when he got to Father Jane's. Yeah. And they always have greasy fingers because apparently they just eat a lot of grease yeah so that's gross too i'm pretty sure that they don't have running water in their ant mound under the graveyard oh i'm sure they don't yeah that sounds super fun i would love to stay there (laughs) on a vacation Ugh, gross Ugh. okay so oh i so talking about how the kids uh, were purchased and would have been totally screwed if he hadn't swooped in and saved them, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wondered if that was true. Were they really uh, oh. without any other options? Right. Is there a nice orphanage down the street that he did not take them near to see? Probably like, in the nicer part of town. Yeah, not catch that fire. They, that they'd probably never been to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is this really their only option? But pretty much presented that way. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and what would he do if somebody left? Has anyone ever left? He doesn't uh, mention. He says they can leave, of course, but I, I don't know. Do you think he would let them leave? I guess it depends on how good they were working for him. That's true. I mean, if there's somebody that's not doing well and, he, and he's punishing them all the time and they leave, he might just say, well, that's fine now. I don't have to feed you. You were mm. worthless anyway. Oh, Ugh, that just sounds so sad. Yeah, he's All a right. terrible person. <laughs> he is. Yeah. But Locke, we like, even though he has what described as hard, sullen eyes. Yes. Which is this poor little sad kid. So sad. He, he doesn't seem sad. He just seems scrappy. Yes. I think so. Oh, and I love the part about his name. So he's asked his name and he says Lamora immediately. And then after he thinks for a second, he says Locke for the name he goes by. But I was thinking, so you meet a little kid or actually anybody, really, and you ask them what their name is. They don't say their last name first. Mm-hmm. I, And then consider about their first name. So one, is Lamora actually his last name or is it really his first name? And two, is Locke actually his name at all? Because he really thinks about that one for a while. Yeah, he does. So I yeah, I don't know if that, maybe his name is really Lamora Locke or Lamora Smith or Lamora other weird name because there are so many weird names. I don't know. <laughs> there are a lot of weird names. <laughs> and so, uh this is the super fun part where we find out that Locke has stolen money from the guards that brought him and the thief maker is so so angry and then has to pay off the guards Mm -hmm. and we find out about the secret piece which is apparently a thing because it's capitalized the secret piece what is it right well i think it's a secret um (laughs) thanks sherlock yeah you know and i think it keeps the peace so i mean i'm really smart um, yeah, I can so tell I by this. With. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. There are a lot of capitalized things in the prologue that... Okay, yeah. I'm like, why is that... I mean, why is that a specific thing? hmm And I guess it's... And, and for it to be capitalized, I don't know how it could be secret if everybody knows what it is. <laughs> so that seems wrong. 
Okay. All right. I really want to say some stuff, but I'm not gonna. We're gonna move on. Oh, rude. I know. It's so great. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, so that's when we hear about Kappa Barsavi. Mm-hmm. I really want to call him Barvasi uh, or something like that. Yeah, it's hard to say Barsavi. Barsavi, yeah. Yeah. So we find out that uh, Locke claims he taught himself to steal, which no one believes. I believe it, though. I, think I believe totally it. totally realistic with a little kid running around just trying to make it if he's managed to live however long he lived on the streets by himself. Yeah. And the thing is, too, people are not suspicious of a four-year-old. Yeah. You know? God, he could probably just get all kinds of stuff. Sure. Just by looking at them with puppy dog eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it's hard to imagine that he's self-taught just by needs of survival. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we find out that Locke apparently steals too much. The name of the prologue jumps in here. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, which is a weird thing for a thief maker to say. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we have the transition, which has the years that I'm very confused about. Yes. It has like the 77th year of this god or this dude or whoever city founder jumps. Then you transition to the 77th year of a different one. So, yeah, it's the 77th year of Gondola. Then mm-hmm. Morgante, then mm-hmm. the current one is Sindovani, <laughs> and they're all lords of something. Mm-hmm. But that just means that the 77th year comes after the 77th year that came after the 77th year. How many Which is not how numbers are work. there? Yeah. Yeah, that's... I, I wonder how many... It's very confusing. How many different people they have to get through before they can hit 78. And also, their seasons are really weird because they say summer turns into winter, which Mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's an autumn in the middle. But then they also say, and I forgot to write it down, um, that these completely different words, this goes into this, that goes into this, which sounds like another set of seasons. Mm, Okay. So does that have a relationship to how they name their years also? Maybe. Uh, or does it mean something else like like harvest mm. and something? I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. <laughs> they, they don't sit there and say, by the way, if you're confused about this situation, here is a complete synopsis of mm-hmm. why we name things the way we do. They left yeah. that part out. So, okay. Still wondering. Uh, we get to six months in. Eight have been hanged already because they mm. have been caught. And... We find out there are streets and windows. So the streets are the kids that are the clutchers and teasers that go steal from people on the street. The windows are the kids who are crawling in windows, literally, to steal things. Which I really like because it reminds me about how I play video games. Where there is any sort of sneak or thieving aspect. Because I steal everything I can possibly (laughs) pick up in a game. Mm-hmm. They mentioned that the kids are even stealing, like, the lard from a pantry. Yeah, I will take brooms that I can never use. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need yeah. them later. I might need this fork. Maybe I can build something with this fork and yeah. this bucket and exactly. create, and I can never use them, but I still take them. I just can't, can't help myself. So you just have a giant bag on your back just full yeah. of random garbage. Like a hundred yeah. wheels yeah. of cheese that I can't imagine how much that can weigh okay okay you know what cheese is always a good thing to have so (laughs) that's a bad example all right fine (laughs) fine i'll have to come up with something else so yes (laughs) so uh the all the different orphans practice at night with the thief maker parading around underground with like treasures in his pockets for them to try to steal Mm -hmm. including the latest fashions that he wears they can learn the new clothes and they're the different ways that they work, mm-hmm. which is a really funny image to me. If him wearing fancy ladies things, yeah. This and... this image that comes to my mind is um, Snape in a dress <laughs> when Neville is afraid of him. <laughs> so the thief maker a is a boggart. Yes, nice. I like it. All right. So there are three rules to being a successful thief: distraction, minimize contact, and leave. Which seem like they would work pretty well, actually. So yep. I'll give him that. He is a good thief. 
But yeah, so we get new kids that arrive, older kids leave. We have no idea where they go. Do you have any idea where they go? I'm assuming a lot of them go to Father Chains. Okay. Um, at least just based on some of the conversation that he's, mm-hmm. he's had with the thief maker and then later with Locke when he's there. Mm-hmm. He kind of alludes to that that's where his people come from. I, I don't know if they all go there. Maybe some of them are just like, I don't want to be here anymore. And they go to some place that maybe is better. So they, they can do better. Mm-hmm. Are you imagining Father Chains has a little army of slightly older children? Yes. <laughs> okay, I like I that. mean, I wasn't imagining an army, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe he takes the older ones. Okay, all right. We find out Locke prefers to work as a teaser, but he is a good clutcher. So he is very well-rounded, but mm-hmm. he likes to make up little stories and intrigues, like the... Uh, the twig in his leg to make it sound like he's broken his oh, leg. That's brilliant. It is. What a smarty. In the, yeah. And the like fake throw up he makes from oh. the peels. Yeah. It's good. It's very good. He's very good. And he likes being the performer. And the thief mm-hmm. maker tells him to stop because the yeah. other kids are too busy watching him <laughs> to steal. <laughs> that is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so then, Locke's crowning achievement is getting the Elder Glass Vine Tavern burned down and starting a riot. Yes. Yeah, it's... Good job, I, dude. Yeah. I would have thought this this kind of thing is something that could have gotten Locke... Um, uh, get, get gotten the death mark for uh-huh. him. Because that's pretty serious. Yeah. He gets away with it. Well, and the Thief Maker says the only reason that you're not getting in major trouble and, you know, killed or kicked out or whatever, Mm -hmm. is because it being burned down hid the fact Mm. that it was robbed first. Yeah. That was his only saving grace, was that somebody else burned it down. But a lot of people died in that whole situation. Yeah, it said something about the Yellow Jackets beat, Mm -hmm. like, 200 people. Yeah, it said they clubbed down, and I don't know if that means just beat or killed or what, but... What? Why? a lot of people. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. I guess when you don't want plague to spread, you do what you have to. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. That's pretty intense. <laughs> but yeah, Locke seems uh, pretty smart figuring out doing the makeup to make him look like he has the plague. He has yeah. 12 kids all set up to go in for 30 seconds and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good. And that's when we first hear about Duke Nicovanti. And we also find out that people are paying Capo Barsavi protection money, mm-hmm. which makes him sound more mobby. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So Locke gets in trouble for this, and then he stays out of trouble for a while. It said that he hid his actions from the thief maker for a time. So I'm wondering what else he did that we just have not heard about. Right. And totally got away with. Mm-hmm. I like it. I do, too. He's smart. Yeah. He is. For such a little kid, I'm afraid that that my kid's going to do things that are terrible and I'll have no idea. Definitely. Yeah, there's there's no doubt that that will happen. Yeah. yeah. And I remember when we were kids and it just, <laughs> all the things we got away with. I don't really want to know about. some of the stuff that they get away with. <laughs> yeah. If nobody got hurt and nobody went to jail and nobody's house got burned down. Those could be some secrets they keep in the past. I think that that sounds good. I think that those (laughs) secrets should be kept in the past. (gasps) I don't need any more stress than I already have. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't need to know everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we jump back to the present. uh, Find out that Father Chains is at the temple of Perilandro. And uh, the... Oh, so it has the description of the five towers. Oh, yeah. Which... It seems so not shoved in there. I mean, it it pretty much fits because they're passing, Mm -hmm. but it just seems so outside of everything else that's been happening. Yeah, that's true. But they sound beautiful. So you've got the five towers and the smallest one is 400 feet high and it's just made of the elder glass. It sounds beautiful. And they have towers and bridges made out of glass. Yeah. And are the towers... 
just like a a thing sticking up in the air or are they actually towers like skyscrapers are they used are they weird glass office buildings in Kamor that people all go up and what the heck are they uh, I would like to know that. <laughs> I would. Wouldn't you? Hmm. Are they hollow or? Yeah. What I don't are know. they? What What is their purpose besides apparently lighting up for an hour every day? Yeah. False light sounds really neat. What is that? Between sunset and full dark. They're just, mm-hmm. they just light up for an hour. That yeah, makes I... no sense. <laughs> None. If it's something about how... The light reflects at sunset. I am not a scientist. I don't know. I don't think it is. That is not what it sounded like in the description. You just think it's like somebody switched a light on in the glass and it just all went crazy? There is something about that glass that just makes Mm -hmm. that happen. And I don't know why. What do you think the five towers are? (sighs) I don't know. All I can keep picturing in my head is a stupid emerald city from the Wizard of Oz. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just like emeralds sticking straight up in like tower form i okay that's wrong but that's what i have in my head yeah that's a different picture than i had in my head <laughs> it makes it seem um cheaper really than yes i had before <laughs> i mean i guess i don't know we're not given much um like perspective mm-hmm. with the people oh, yeah. like they're not close like the thief maker doesn't say anything about it Locke has no commentary about how close they are or if they see anything mm-hmm. else if people are going in and out if you can see through them or not mm-hmm. so it, there's just really not enough of a description to come up with a purpose yeah so we hear a little more about father chains's history at this point He's been changed to the the temple for 13 years. Apparently paid someone to take his eyes. Mm-hmm. Which uh, is... Uh, that's pretty devoted. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm not sure devoted is the word I want to use. A little crazy. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I love the part where it mentioned how the thief maker purposefully made noise coming up to Father Chains. Right. Which just makes me think he must usually walk pretty quietly because he's a thief. Oh, that's that's a good point. Yeah. I I think it was probably unnecessary for him to make noise. I think Why's that? Well, I think if you're talking about somebody who can't see, mm-hmm. they can hear way better than the average person. They'll know if people are coming. Yes, that's true. Is that true? Do they actually have better senses or are they yes. just more in No, it in is tune true. With Huh. No, they are better. Okay, I Maybe somebody is going to hear me say that and go, no, you're crazy. But I think that they they have to overcompensate so much that they actually develop those senses better. Hmm. Superpower? Kind of, like Daredevil. He Super doesn't Father Chains is Daredevil. <laughs> I'm just saying, he could be. Daredevil is very good at disguises. I don't know. But, like, that's his whole thing is that he got blinded when he was a kid, and he mm-hmm. doesn't have any superpowers. Okay. And he's blind, and he... I mean, you know, hearing things like three blocks away, somebody opening a knife. Okay, maybe that's not super that realistic. Extreme. But I, I think on a smaller scale, yes, blind people okay. do develop those, especially hearing. Mm-hmm. My only experience with Daredevil is the very, very bad Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. Oh, Okay. I haven't watched the Netflix No, I've show. watched the Netflix one, <laughs> which is better than, yeah, better than the Ben Affleck yeah, it was, version. It was, so, it was just so bad. Yeah, it's but, not good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lies of Locke Lamora. Yes. Oh, my God. Calo and Galdo Sansa. Great. How much do you love them? So much. I love them. The Wonder Twins. <laughs> yeah. They make me very happy. Yeah. And you you don't know which is which at this point. Nope. And even if you did know which is which, you probably wouldn't be able to continue knowing who is who because they're identical. And I don't think it matters because they can use each other's names. That's true. They're just interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that um, later on when all of the uh, Father Chains' lies are revealed, mm-hmm. he, he calls them idiots. and he, I mean, he's just like so... 
like rough on him, but I think, but to me, it feels like in a sort of joking, joking mm-hmm. kind of way, like, oh, I hate you, but not really. It's like lovable mocking. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a little ribbing kind of. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I get from it. I can't tell you, I can't put my finger on specifically how he says it or what he says that makes me think that, but that's sort of mm-hmm. how it feels. That feels comforting. Considering all the bad things that have happened so yeah. far in this chapter. It just barely at the end gets a little lighter. <laughs> nice. Oh, so Luck goes inside and Father Chains unchained, gets unchained. Mm-hmm. We find out he's not actually chained. Nope. And then he pretends to be healed when Locke puts his hands on his face. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Were you surprised when Father Chains turned out not to be blind or actually chained up? Permanently? I was not surprised that he okay. wasn't really chained up i assumed okay. that he wasn't chained up i assume mm-hmm. that was fake um i i was on the fence about whether he was actually blind or not mm-hmm. i was i didn't i didn't think that he didn't have any eyes because that's okay. really weird um but i thought he could be somebody that's blind but that might as well not be because they're so you know because their other senses are so good you know you get characters because like he's that daredevil sometimes. Because he's exactly, he mm-hmm. takes off yeah. the beard. He has a, a red <laughs> helmet with little horns on it, <laughs> and he takes off. He pulls off his robe, and it's a red <laughs> skin tight suit. Oh, God. But he's still seventy in the face. That is no, a that's really not at all strange <laughs> picture. <laughs> I no. can't even keep that in my head. <laughs> I I'm I wasn't super surprised when they said he wasn't blind, but I uh-huh. I I wasn't sure if he wasn't or not. But the chain thing, okay. no, absolutely not. Be, and I think I think I thought that based on the way that he his conversations with the thief maker were, mm-hmm. he was using foul language. I mean, he was really mm-hmm. sarcastic. So he's not like a devoted. Pr- I mean, it's obvious he's not super. I don't know what sort devout. Mm-hmm. So I didn't think that he was the kind of person that would like lock themselves up to okay that didn't strike me that yeah yeah did you like him i did oh good i do I'm assuming you don't like the thief watcher the thief maker because i don't he's horrible he is horrible he yeah. when he was taking the orphans down to the to the um what is it shaders hill shades hill shades hill it reminded me of the part in pinocchio where they coerce the boys onto the island where there's like games and drinks and food and all this kind of stuff. Um, It's very like, come with me. Everything will be okay. It'll be better. And then once they're there for a little while, they all turn into donkeys. Oh. So he reminds me of that kind of person. Yeah. Not that he would turn them into donkeys, but. It's been a really long time since I've seen Pinocchio. Don't bother seeing it again. It's terrible. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> least favorite disney movie ever i was just imagining some weird amalgamation of that and lord of the flies oh all the, all the horrible mm. boys on the island and yeah, everything okay. and the pig and uh yeah that also a terrible book yeah also I feel bad book though i, I feel like again yeah it, you know the the kinds of books they make you read in school they're like oh it's a classic but like why is it a classic because it's terrible that's not it's not good. Yeah, I, I not like just because it's a comment it's not on society. Written well, yeah, Oof. just because it's a comment on Oof. society doesn't mean that I want that comment in my head. It's yeah, I don't horrible. I'm not a fan of that book or Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah I feel like the book was really the book or the actual story of Pinocchio was really different from the Disney movie, but both were not good. Well, they're even just the basic idea is really creepy. Yeah. I'm going to build a boy out of wood. And then I'm going to wish that he could come alive. Okay, creeper, why don't you just get married and have kids? I'm not sure that the kind of person who thinks he could build a son is the person that would be able to find someone who would marry him. Oh, that's a good point. So maybe he was out of choices really at that point. I guess suppose, I'm not defending what was his name Gaspacho or something okay, no Gepetto. not Gaspacho Gepetto. 
Okay. Um, I think the idea was that he spent all his life being a toy maker, and then by the time he realized he wanted a kid, he was too old. Oh. But... But that's dudes don't really creepy. have that problem. That's also true, yeah. Maybe yeah. he couldn't get any uh, women of birthing age to marry him because he was so old. That's a nice thought. Well, it was mm. a long time ago. People were weirder then. Were they? Really? People were as weird then. That's fair. <laughs> In different ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so... Uh, this is when we learn about the death mark. So not only did the Kappa approve the death, there's a shark's tooth that comes with it that's a death mark. So Locke's life is still not really safe. He can still be killed at any point. Right. Which is... Even if the Duke adopts him. <laughs> that was that's... a really specific example. <laughs> that's what they said. Even yeah. if the Duke adopts you, I could still kill you. So this makes me wonder about the duke and the kappa and how they are um not how they work together but i mean they must know about each other oh i'm but sure if, they do yeah but if someone could i mean even though it's just an example if someone could kill the duke's son just because the kappa approved it like the kappa has more power what is he not gonna oh, get in that's trouble a good point i mean who really is in charge of this city based on this very very small part of the story it sort of seems to me that that the duke is somebody that i imagine very high up and sort of Mm -hmm. like this part of my dukedom is uh dukey (laughs) sure right right dutchy i don't know i think it's dutchy that doesn't sound right (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I think that he just is like, I don't care about that part. That's a bunch of garbage people. I know that this dude, Kappa, is like, I'm going to run this. And I'm just going to let him because I don't want to deal with it. Like he's... I guess that works. Like the Duke is sort of in these like social circles where mm-hmm. he... I keep imagining like um, like a silly little king that like has oh, parties yeah. and stuff. That's sort of based mm-hmm. on nothing i have nothing to base that on um, well, there are a lot of uh a lot of people in history like that yeah exactly just a so, figurehead so i think he's just letting this guy do whatever he wants because then it's stuff that doesn't end up coming to him to deal mm-hmm. with that would be nice yeah Someone well i mean work except the guy's a terrible person so well yeah i guess this duke doesn't really care that much about all his people yeah the end of the prologue we find out Locke arranged two murders Mm -hmm. of some boys of his brothers according to the thief maker calls everybody (laughs) brothers and sisters so yeah i'm sure they feel that way too i'm definitely (laughs) after all the bullying and (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh so what do you think about this were you surprised this is what got him in trouble yes i was very surprised (laughs) this is not the Locke i have come to know and love Mm -hmm. in In 20 pages pages yeah no i was really surprised (laughs) because him being a good thief does not make him a murderer so there has to be something that just was huge and pushed him over Mm -hmm. to go into something like that i have i don't have any problem believing that he was able to cover it up but i don't know why he did it yeah in the first place yeah do you think it's redeemable whatever reason it sounds like you think he he isn't terrible i i want to yeah i want it to be i want him to be basically a decent person and not just like oh i'm just gonna murder these kids because they didn't like my show or whatever i don't know well he still might be the seven-year-old jack the ripper we have oh that's true i don't want him to be a tiny little sociopath Oh, now I want a little pop doll of tiny sociopath lock. <laughs> It'd be so cute. And it would be tiny because he's so little. Mm-hmm. Very adorable. Yeah. Okay, Rosanna, what is your top three from this episode? First so, of all, what's your category? 
I decided that the top three things I would talk about are character names. Okay. Mostly because they're all strange and weird and they're not normal names that you hear. They're mm-hmm. they're very much like Game of Thrones, where okay. those aren't normal names. Yeah. Um obviously the first one is gonna be Locke. Um mm-hmm. like we talked about earlier, how he gave his name up to the thief maker. So he asks him asks his name and he says Lamora and for one thing it's weird that he gave him his last name first and another mm-hmm. thing it's weird that the thief maker assumed that that was a last name that's true yeah so what makes me that makes me think that that must be a a common enough last name for him to realize it's a last name oh okay so does that mean that there are other lamoras and does he have family or is his name not really Lamora, and he picked that name because he needed mm. one? Because and it's then, common. Yeah, and then also Locke, after my father, that he just pulled out of air. <laughs> I don't think that's really his name. Maybe it really is his father's name. I don't think that's uh-huh. his name. Maybe okay. that's the name he goes by, but it's it doesn't seem totally legit to me. And then, of yeah, course... Well- with his name, I have the feeling that no one has really used his name in a long time. Oh, you know what? That's a really good point, too. Maybe he just didn't ever think about his name because nobody ever he, talked to him. He probably doesn't actually know anybody because he wasn't from Catch Fire. He just kind of got went there to to survive for a while. So I feel like he hasn't actually told anyone his name in a really long time. Uh, yeah, and f- and depending on how long he's been alone, does he even remember his name? Oh, now it's sad again. Yeah. Oh. Because if he's like three oh. or four and nobody's talking yeah. to him. Mm-hmm. Oh. I hope they flesh that out a little bit more, too. I'd like to hear what happens there. <sighs> yeah, it's very sad. So okay, your other second, name. yeah, second character name is Thief Maker. Um, mm-hmm. So this guy's been doing something for 20 years. So that that makes yeah. his name Thief Maker. But what's. What's really his name? That's not a name. There are a lot of <laughs> nicknames or titles, but not real mm-hmm. names. Um, yeah. And then the third one is going to be the Eyeless Priest or Father Chains, which, by the way, not Eyeless or in Chains. <laughs> so, so he's just father? Father or priest. <laughs> yeah. he He's not Eyeless and he's not in Chains. So he's just a super liar. Even and he's just, not even the... Yeah, he's not even the priest of Paralandro. of what he says he's the priest of. Yeah, it's a completely different god. So even just by title, he's a liar. So I expect oh, many I like more that. lies from him. Do you have any predictions? Um. Well, I I assume that the next chapter is going to be a jump forward in time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think okay. that the story is going to pick up from him being seven. Um. Why not? Uh, because I can't imagine that there's much of a story you can talk about a seven-year-old. I mean, I guess there could be like a training montage with Father Chains, <laughs> but I don't, ex- nice I don't music. expect that. Yeah, I don't expect okay. that. Um, I expect him to be at an age where he's uh, more independent, more of his own person. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess that he is still with Father Chains, though. Okay. I'd like to think, because I hope that um, Father Chain stays in the story and continues to be um, a character that we hear from. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get some explanation about these murders. Who he killed, why he killed him, how did he get away with it, how did he get Mm -hmm. caught. Um, And uh, I'm sure we're going to hear about the stupid Kappa guy again, even though at this point... (laughs) I would be fine if we didn't, because mm-hmm. whatever. Um, I have a feeling we might get some sort of retribution against the thief maker. Oh. So there might be some sort of a like, hey, this guy's a terrible person. Let's all, you know, riot or whatever. I don't know. You're going to lead a child riot? Exactly. Tiny little people with pitchforks and fires. <laughs> But like Tiny weird, pitchforks. weird fires, okay? Because here's another oh, thing about yeah. this. One of the things in the story says the cold blue light of candles. Okay, so fire's mm. not cold. 
fire's not true. really blue. So well, the really hot fire is blue. Right. But a candle's not going to be that hot. That's true. So, and then, you know, they talk about that. They say ghost light. They say fey mm. half light. They say um, false light. So there's something about this a whole lot of light. universe that their light is weird. And and I hope that we get more explanation about those two. And the fact that um, they use the term alien materials mm-hmm. and that the town was shaped by creatures. Mm-hmm. So I'd really like to get some more information about that. What do you think the creatures were? I'm going to go with aliens just because they said alien. <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I have no idea what they are. And also, if they're the ones that created the town, why aren't they still there? That's a very good question. Thank you. I tried. Why did they leave? Right. They built a bunch of stuff out of freaky glass, and then they're like, see ya. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I need more information. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. Do you have any predictions about Cal and Galdo? <clears throat> Since I know you like them. Uh, they're just going to be around being them goofy selves. <laughs> Aren't they the sidekicks that just make the jokes in the background? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining all the sidekicks of superheroes and yeah, things. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down for that. Yeah. Styles and Teen Wolf is Kalo and uh, Galdo, basically. Yes. I want them to be, like, comic relief. Okay. I like that. Yeah. We need comic relief after all this <sighs> no really sad stuff happening. It is time for Cheek of the Week. This is where we talk about something really great that we love, a product we like, or a thing that's happening that's really great. So, I'm going to go first. My Cheek of the Week is very appropriate to us reading a book. It's these get-to-the-point magnetic bookmarks that I use Mm. that I really love. I got them on Amazon. They're this little box, and you get, I don't know, 20 or something different color little arrow bookmarks, and they stick together, so you don't have to worry about them falling, because I used to use, like, a ripped-off piece of newspaper or envelope that happened to be around as a bookmark. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always gross, and it falls down if you drop your book or something, and it's terrible. Same. (laughs) Yeah. And so I have these little magnetic bookmarks that I really like. And so these, they just close onto the page you're on. And because they have little points, you can put them on different parts of the page and point to where you're at. Oh, that's yeah. smart. It's great. You can just jump in immediately Aww. and figure out where you are in the book without having to try to figure out um, where the heck you were. Which yeah. I really like. That sounds awesome. I, I read a lot of books at once, so I'm skipping back and forth. So it might take me a second to remember where I was on a page. But I don't have to. I just use magnetic bookmarks and I'm good. So you're one of those people that can read more than one book at a time. Not that I can. I just can't help it. I I get distracted and I want to start something else. No, that's weird. Don't do that. That's (laughs) all right. You can do that. But I no. I I read one book at a time. Really? Except for uh, this one, because I'm not allowed to read it as much as I want. So (laughs) yeah, that was. That would be really boring if you got to read one chapter a week and that's, and that's all it. you could ever read. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz I know we're both really big readers and so yeah. that would be depressing. Mhm. What was your cheek of the week, Rosanna? So, that's funny that yours is about a book because mine sort of is too. And it's okay. also sort of about Amazon. <laughs> oh, I love Amazon. God. So, my cheek of the week is Amazon's Kindle First program, uh-huh. which I have had Amazon Prime for a while. I don't know if this is a new thing or if I just didn't know it was a thing. But every month they offer between four and six books that haven't been released yet that if you're a Prime member, you can download for free. Oh. Which is a really cool program. And the one that I got in February, I just finished. um, And it's called Extracted. And it's a book by R.R. Hayward. And it's about time travel, which is one of my favorite topics to read about. Um, I don't like time travel. What? No. What? No. It's so confusing. No. I okay. Can't, I, okay. I can't keep up. It's there are too many paradoxes. And <sighs> can you hear I me just... sighing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can't do it. This... My brain cannot follow along. No. This is a really okay. the The reviews on it are are mostly, I think, pretty decent. I loved it. I thought it was a really, really good book. It's the first in a trilogy. Um, Mm -hmm. When I got to the end of it, I was all excited about buying the next one. And then I saw that it actually doesn't even come out until June. 
So uh, he's pretty annoyed. Yeah, um, it's tough. But it's it's about this guy that he invents a time machine. Um, mm-hmm. He goes back in time to change something personal about his own life. He realizes that he messes up the future where it's like wasteland. See? Yep. That's, yes, which that's is what they do. Get, that's where I stop and I just can't do it anymore. So then he decides to pluck three people out of history that are going to be good at fixing the world for him. And he and he pulls them in the second right before they actually died. So oh. there are people in history that died and he saw that they died. So he goes back and grabs oh. them real quick. So they're not missed. Mm-hmm. And they're people specific with specific skills and talents that he needs for this mission. And so he picks these three people. Um, it's I really, feel like everything would go wrong. There just you wouldn't know enough about those people to. Uh, well, and one of them, one of them is this uh, English woman who is special forces, and she's a private bodyguard to the prime minister. Okay. And this other one is this. Uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but, like, the guys that do special ops that did them in World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, and he went pretty much on a su- – well, actually, it was a suicide mission because he was – he did die until mm-hmm. they went back and, you know, picked him up. And then this other guy is a uh, insurance adjuster. <laughs> what? And so he gets he gets there and they finally, you know, it, they go through a lot of drama before they figure out, mm-hmm. before the guy tells them why they're there. And he's like, um, he's looking at the other, other two people. I think there's been a mistake. I'm an insurance adjuster. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, no. Well, you're you're who we want. So it's a it's a really, really good book. I liked it okay. a lot. And I can't wait for the second one to come out. Okay. I like the the whole, well, I, I have Amazon Prime, but I didn't know that you could get all those books for free. Yeah. Which mean that now I'm going to read even more books at the same time. Well, <laughs> yeah. And they're released before you know, regular people <laughs> can even get them. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, you get you can get them a month ahead. But you can only get one of them mm-hmm. out of the four to six that they're offering. Oh, I see. Okay. But, I mean, it's a good way to get a free book and to, you know, kind of get something test it ahead. Out. Yeah. Yeah, I like to test things without having to buy them first. Yeah, you should read this. That's always nice. I, I actually would be really interested to... Oh, you know what, Nikki? Don't read it. Oh, because okay. I'm going to read the second one when it comes out, and then I'm going to read the third one when it comes out, and then we could do a podcast on it. Oh, my God. And you'll be the one that great. doesn't know anything except for that huge description I just gave you. <laughs> um, I'm going to forget by then because okay, the second one hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> okay, good. Also, remember, there was something about an insurance adjuster, so maybe there was some <laughs> life insurance for your time travel, which sounds like a really weird business because you'd have to insure all your ancestors. And what do you call the people in the future? What are your... Future descendants. Descend. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You think I'd know a word like that? But well, apparently you I know, didn't. English yeah. is hard. <laughs> that could be a really weird insurance company, but I can see that in some sort of sci-fi book. <laughs> yeah, I, I can need to see write that. this story. Yeah, time travel insurance. <laughs> you may never even make it back. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that those are our cheeks of the week, and those will be on our website. Yeah, listeners, you can find the links to our Cheeks of the Week, and you can send us a message at our website, which is somethingcheekypodcast.com. That's our episode. Follow us on Twitter at SomeCheek, visit our website, and please leave a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And you should also check out our other podcasts where we're discussing the TV series Vikings. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Hello, Cheekies. This is Rosanna. Nikki and I wanted to give a shout out to Alexander Rose from the Spoken Word team on Slack. Alex, thank you so much for being our podcast beta tester. We appreciate your feedback, suggestions, and advice. They've made a big difference.